Proud's car seat is fit is to go to the manual and follow the instructions very carefully. I, for one, have done just that, and I realised that I hadn't actually done poor old George's straps tight enough in his car seat, so I'm going to change that next week. Coming up, Volkswagen answers your questions, and meet Sue Fink. She was watching television one day, saw an advert that didn't seem quite right. Now it's been banned. We'll explain why. Now, some stories that we deal with on Rogue Traders are all about the money, and that's it. But some of them aren't. They're about something much more important. And tonight is one of those. There has been a great deal written on the subject of dogs and the unique nature of our relationship with them. It may be nonsense, but one theory is that we feel so strongly about dogs because they represent what we would like to see in ourselves. A simpler, more loyal, trusting and optimistic version of what's in the mirror. Now, as I say, it may be nonsense, but it does explain why when we find out that someone's causing harm to dogs, we tend to take it rather personally. You know, as a nation. I can't take you on this one, I'm afraid. I think it's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride. Come on, let's go see Mama. Let's go see Mama. Yeah, that went well. That went well. A bumpy ride indeed. There's nothing dirty about us, John. Wet, dangerous and taking us to places dogs just shouldn't be. We're on the trail of puppy dealers John Wilcock and Bernadette Nunny in West Yorkshire. They sell sick dogs purely for profit to people who love animals. People like Jane. She found an advert for a Shih Tzu puppy back in June. It said the puppy had been lovingly reared in a family home. She called up Bernadette and arranged to see the puppy. So what happened when you went there? What did you find? We were shown into the stable yard and in front of us was six Shih Tzu puppies just in a wheelbarrow on straw. One of them in particular didn't look particularly well. Um, and I actually raised the point, the guy at the stable yard, he reassured me that actually they, these puppies were absolutely fine, um, they'd all been vet checked. To me, there was something wrong with that situation and those puppies. I backtracked and said, I'm not comfortable, I'm not sure about this. The guy at the stable yard was getting impatient. Jane felt pressured to make a decision on the spot, so she paid £350 and took the puppy, who she named Leia, with her. But even on the way home, it was obvious she wasn't well. In the journey, that dog was horrendously ill. She was slavering from her mouth. She was vomiting. So I said to my partner, I want to get a vet checked straight away. Leia was diagnosed with severe diarrhea, malnourishment, and a flea infestation. And just four days after she was bought, she died. You think you're going to get a new addition to your family, a beautiful, healthy, bouncing puppy. The impact they have, they come into your life and it's as if they've been there forever, not just for a few days. You know, it was devastating, devastating to find a, a puppy dead in its bed in your lounge. Jane's vet told her to call the puppy seller to explain what had happened. And what response did you get? Abuse down the phone. I was told that that puppy was absolutely fine and there was nothing wrong with it, and he slammed the phone down on me. It's difficult to say. Do you regret having bought the puppy you did? No. I want to stop them doing what they're doing. And so do we. So I suppose the message of this is never to buy a dog from a place that you have suspicions about. Guess what we're going to do now, you two? That's right. We're going to buy a dog from a place about which we have suspicions. I'm well aware of the paradox. You paradox. <laughs> We're replying to this advert selling Shih Tzu Bichon Freeze Cross puppies. John Wilcock and Bernadette Nunny have advertised a new litter for sale. So, we make the call. Hello. Hello, is that the puppy seller? We arrange a visit to meet a woman who calls herself Louise and, of course, the dog. The investigation is on. First, a very important question. 
So we need a name for this dog. What do you think, Vladimir? How about that, Vladimir? Well, how about Gareth? No. Yes? Well, those are my top two. You come up with something. What is it? What is it? What is it? Gizmo? That sounds all right. Hiya. Gizmo it is. And the appointment has been made, but that's not where our planning ends. Because we're going undercover with expert witness vet Mike Jessup. If our doggy isn't 100%, Mike can tell us straight away. Here to greet us is Louise, except that's not her actual name, because we know she's Bernadette Nunny. Yeah. Give it a go. Oh, give it He's a little bit oh. nervous. We don't believe in keeping him in cages at all. No. You know, um, I'm claustrophobic, so I know what it feels to be it's inside. Best to let him out, isn't it? How old are you? 14 weeks now. Oh, right, yeah. OK. Nice. Yeah. But they're a good age now. Yeah. Because when they're too young, it's not fair. No. So far, so caring. But her name isn't the only lie she tells us. Does she have lots of puppies? No. No, oh, right. no this is, is it. Is it the last of them? Is, is it? it? Oh, right, OK. No, this is her first litter. She's not having any more. Oh, right, OK. We've got dogs, but don't, we haven't got time for puppies. Really? Because in the last month, we've seen four different adverts for four different breeds, advertised by Bernadette Nunny and John Wilcock. It'll, it'll be um, all right around kids and stuff, won't Oh, it? definitely, yeah. we've got our niece coming yeah. around quite a bit. Oh, definitely, yeah. Now, this bit is really important. When you're buying a puppy, make sure that you see it with its mum. It's one way of being sure that the pup hasn't been bred elsewhere and brought in. And please, don't accept excuses. Are the mum and dad around? Uh, she's, she is somewhere. I don't know where she is. I'm roaming about. Free range. Yeah. We've got, like, 90-odd acres, so she could be oh, anywhere. Oh, she could be anywhere yeah. on it. Oh, gosh, yeah. Excuses like that one. I think he's really nice. Yeah. Oh, dear. I know. Strange, isn't it? He <laughs> will do. For tonight, he'll probably just, like, lay in a corner and think, where the hell are Oh, is he right? We paid £275 for Gizmo. Yeah. Good. That's so is, is, is if that... If you need us, for all, just yeah. give us a ring. Oh, right, OK, Good. then. But this situation is all wrong. Bernadette asks no questions about us, and she's given us no paperwork, just a bag of mouldy food that Mike says would make Gizmo sick if we gave it to him. Alrighty. What's most worrying is that Gizmo is most definitely not OK. He's shockingly underweight. You can feel... His, his spine is standing up, and his little ribs, you can rattle those ribs. He just looks to me like he's terrified of life. Well, Gizmo's now in the best place he could possibly be, but dogs in distress at a rural address. I'm sure it's not something you'd want us to sit back and ignore. More in ten. All righty. Well, Gizmo is seriously unwell. He's malnourished and significantly older than we were told. His fur is stained yellow, which is a sign he slept in his own urine. He's not been vaccinated and has a potentially lethal parasite called Giardia. His demeanor is very, very flat, and he just looks to me like he's terrified of life at the moment. And I think that's probably because he's been so badly confined. Of course, that's not what Bernadette told us. She said something completely different. We don't believe in keeping them in cages at all. The socialisation side is really what concerns me most of all with him. He doesn't seem to know how to interact with people. That's going to be a real problem for him in, for the rest of his life. Oh. Oh. Okay, He's in danger of being a little bit of an aggressive dog, and therefore he shouldn't go into an environment with kids uh, because kids will want to go up and cuddle him and his reaction will be to try and bite. Uh, He'd be all right around kids and stuff, Oh, it? definitely, so yeah. we've got our niece coming yeah. around quite a bit. Oh, definitely, yeah. He never wags his tail. He cowers in the corner, he's withdrawn and he's scared. But he's still our dog. <laughs> So we're going to get some specialist help for him. Meet dog behaviourist Carrie Evans. First impressions when he came into the room, very, very timid. Didn't want to explore his environment. Every time we've picked him up, he's sort of scrambled to try and get away. 
clearly indicates because of his lack of engagement with human beings that he hasn't had any attention, which is quite sad. Just like Mike, Carrie suspects he's been kept in a cage for his whole life. She's decided to keep him for the next few weeks to try and socialise him. Meanwhile, we call back John Wilcock and Bernadette Nunny, or as she's known to us, Louise, to let them know how sick Gizmo is. Hello? Hello? Is Louise there, please? Hi there. Is Louise there, please? Uh, she's not available at the moment, I'm speaking. It's uh, Chris. Called a couple of days ago regarding the puppy I bought. Right, and what's happened with pup? Well, it's the same, same as last time, so we, I told you we got the test results back from the vet and it had parasites, contagious parasites. Right. It doesn't come near us, doesn't come near the kids. I was just a bit worried about her. I was wondering if she could tell me a little bit more about him. She knew, she obviously, she knows about him because yeah. she had the litter and stuff like that. Yeah, all right. OK. Yeah. All right, cheers, James. Unsurprisingly, we never hear back. That's possibly because John Wilcock and Bernadette Nunny have been very busy. This is what's confusing me. You see, the day we bought Gizmo, they said he was the very last puppy they had. And yet, the day after we bought him, they put another advert online offering Shih Tzu Bichon Freeze cross puppies for sale. You make sense of that? I don't get it. Do you get it? In fact, we've linked John Wilcock and Bernadette Nunny to nine different litters, nearly 50 puppies in the last four months. They use five different telephone numbers. And here's the clincher. The pictures they use in their adverts aren't the dogs they're trying to sell to you. When two more team members go in posing as customers, suddenly, John Wilcock is answering calls again. Oh, hi, guys. Oh, they're a bit scared. Is it normal for them to be a bit sort of nervy around strangers? Yeah, they are strangers. Yeah. They like King Trevor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like they're coming out of the shell a bit more now. If you get down to their level, then... If you don't name them, that's when they get to the test. Sorry, I don't get to the <laughs> We're probably not in a position to take one or anything today, but, you know, we don't want right. to miss out. Um, well, I've got somebody else wanting to come, so... Oh, have you? Yeah. Do, do they want one or two? I'm not bothered. I don't know. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, not bothered. That's about right. But they should be, because John Wilcock and Bernadette Nunny are breaking the law. And if you're prepared to sit still, I'll tell you why. You might be thinking to yourself, well, don't they need a licence for this sort of thing? And it's a very good point well made. If they're breeding more than four litters a year on the premises, they should have a breeder's licence issued by the local authority. But if they're just, as we suspect, bringing the same volume of dogs onto the premises to sell, well, then they need a pet shop licence. Now, I need to take my footage to someone who understands exactly what's going on in your heads. And that someone is pet behaviourist Carrie Evans. Whoa, look at that. Absolutely terrified. They want to run to that point of safety. These puppies feel safe when they're in the cage. Look at the tails down. Exactly the same as Gizmo. Terrified of people that should be with them on a daily basis, playing with them, feeding them. Behaviour to one side. We were told that Gizmo was the last villager, and that's it. They don't do... They don't you know, sell a lot of dogs. Gizmo isn't a Cocker Spaniel. Gizmo is nothing like a Cocker Spaniel. He's a Shih Tzu cross. So where have these come from? This is a multi-breed operation. It's purely for money. People, don't, people who love dogs do not treat dogs like that. So how is Gizmo doing? He was really scared around people. Time to see the results of Carrie's hard work. We saw a huge contrast when we introduced Sophie. Another dog in the room wanted to play straight away, wanted to engage, and that actually relaxed him around the people. So that would indicate that he's been around other dogs up until this age, to the detriment that he doesn't want to engage and relate to people. She's been working round the clock to socialise him. I can't wait to meet him again. Meet Gizmo. Oh, hello, Gizmo. Good boy, well done. So you're coming on really nicely. He's going to be fine, isn't he? With, with time, yeah, yeah, we'll get there. A little cuddle. Gizmo, don't worry, mate. Don't worry, mate. It's going to be all right. God, he's super cute, isn't he? He's lovely. But as we're going to find out, Gizmo has been the lucky one. OK, well, you know what's coming next. I'm afraid, unlike you, 
it's not going to be pretty, but we've got to do it. We've got to do it for Gizmo, for Leia, and anyone that's ever loved a dog. Away you go. <laughs> it's time to go. OK, so we know that all is not well behind those gates, but what can you do to avoid being part of this terrible trade? First, and most important, always see the dog with its mum where it was reared. Any excuses for mum's absence, just walk away. Number two, never impulse buy. You should visit a number of times where the breeder asks as many questions as you do. If you're pressured to buy however you've travelled, however far you've travelled, just walk away. And three, puppies like people. If they're scared of you, don't buy them to rescue them. Your money could end up buying four or five more to take their place. All of that advice and plenty more is on our website. Next, laser eye surgery. Now, back to our puppy dealers. John Wilcock and Bernadette Nunny are selling puppies, bringing them plenty of money, but also bringing misery to the dogs and the families who buy them. And that just won't do. We're on our way to confront John Wilcock and Bernadette Nunny, but we're not the only ones on their tail. Just five days before we arrive, we discover the RSPCA have raided the farm. They rescued over 40 dogs, of which a number were already dead, and one was found dying in a wheelbarrow. We hope there are no more dogs. We hope they're now safely in the hands of the RSPCA, but we hope there are people, people that we want to talk to, ask some questions of. We park up outside, and we're ready. Timing's just right. Hello there. Because that's John Wilcock in the courtyard. John, Matt Allwright from BBC Rogue Traders. How are you? What I'd like to ask you is how can you own a dog yourself and yet still sell dogs in the condition that we bought Gizmo, our dog? How can you do that? How can you how can you own dogs yourself? How can you own dogs yourself and still keep that many, call them, please, call them here, any time you like. How can you sell dogs in that condition to people who take them home and within days they die, John? How can that be? Tell me, tell me how you can do that, yeah, consciously. Can you give me an explanation? Because there are dog owners across the country who want to understand it as well. This is Matt Allwright from right. BBC Rogue Traders asking you how you, in front of a nation full of dog lovers, can behave the way you do. You got an answer for me? Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't know. Yes. Bernadette, can you tell me how you can have dogs around the farm and yet pull them out of a place around the back and then... Right, let's go and see what we can find around the back. Bring the police. Listen, guys, we'll be more than happy for you to bring the police. Bring anybody that... Yeah, because we're off now. There's Bernadette in the corner there. So this was the operation. This was where you'd call to come and pick up your dog that you thought had been raised in a family home, but in fact was in a crate out the back or a yard in the back, and they were being kept, we think, 40 dogs at least. When the RSPCA came in here, they found dead dogs out the back. That's right, isn't it? That's right, isn't it, John? Dead dogs. Dogs that were being so poorly kept, you couldn't even keep them alive. You couldn't feed them properly. You couldn't keep them free from disease. I'm right, aren't I? John? Bernadette. OK. Right, well, while they're there, we can go and have a poke round the back and see what we can find. We head to where we think the dogs were being kept so we can see the conditions Gizmo was living in. But John Wilcock doesn't want us anywhere near there. Get out of this farm now. Sorry, John, you want us away from the farm? Get out of this farm now. OK, no, so tell me, now you're out, John, no. now that we're leaving, John, Tell me, how can you keep dogs in the conditions that we've seen them in? And then hand them out to people, and then hand them out. What are you doing with that? What are you doing with that? You're going to jet wash us. We're making for the exit, but John makes sure we're not leaving dry. No! There's nothing dirty about us. Get out! There's nothing dirty about us, John. You're the one that needs cleaning up. It's only water, John, for Christ's sake. You need to clean... Things quickly take a more serious turn when a woman picks up a brick and throws it at our cameraman. No! It bounces off the back of his camera and hits his neck. Okay, time to go. Time to go. Get 
We make a fast exit. You all right, mate? OK, close the door, please. Seat belts on, everyone. What hit you, Jamie? A rock. We call the police. So, as you can see, that's the welcome that we got. John Wilcock turned a uh, pressure washer on us. A woman we believe to be the landowner threw a brick, hit our cameraman. OK, time to go, time to go. We need to get Jamie properly looked at all, isn't it? But as we try to drive away, the exit road is being blocked by a van and two of John Wilcock's friends. Luckily, the police are close by. They quickly deal with the passenger who's starting towards us. Finally, we set off, but even then, the van still follows us. He's now following us as we try and leave this place. I don't know what's going to happen. He's by himself. He's got a, a white transit van. Eventually, he works that out and drives off. God forbid you ever go to that place. God forbid you ever come across those people it's searching for some kind of joy from a little doggy. Be very, very careful, please, guys, when you're responding to adverts for puppies, because you just don't know where you're going. You don't know who you're dealing with unless you ask some really good questions and make sure you get the right answers. That is what you're funding, unless you're doing your homework when you buy a dog. Please, I ask you, please don't do it. As we reported, when the RSPCA raided the place, they did sadly find some dead and dying animals. But have a look at this. Over 30 puppies now safe and well at one of their centres. We took them along some toys, the first they'd ever had. But it doesn't end there. We know there are other dishonest puppy dealers in the country, and we know that you might know where some of them are. Get in touch. Let us know. We also want to know how to solve the problem once and for all. Any suggestions, very welcome. But for now, these are the faces you need to remember. John Wilcock and Bernadette Nunny, our first rogues on the wall. Dogs everywhere. Lift your legs in salute. Brilliant stuff, Matt. Loads of you getting in touch. Thank you very much. Maria Fowler on the car seat story. Parents, please.